This is the sound of a better life. I'm your host, Maria Gulea, and I found out that when I ask questions related to the meaning of life, questions of life philosophies and practices for a better life, I enter into a realm where I can be me with everything I am. I want you to know that if this episode is the last thing I do, it was well worth it. Because right now, I've got you listening. Welcome to The Sound of a Better Life, Michael Luton. It's wonderful to be able to be in Denmark and New York City at the same time. I've never been able to accomplish that before. Look what you've made happen. <laughs> It's magic. It's magic. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm visiting you here in your office in New York, and it's really central, right? This office? Yeah. Is yes, this not it's, downtown New York? Well, we're right in the edge of Greenwich Village. So if you go east, it's the East Village. If you go west, it's the West Village. And everything uptown is midtown and uptown. It is pretty great to be here. Yeah, right. It's only not in Brooklyn, where everybody else is oh, now. Is that better? Well, Brooklyn is very popular <laughs> now. It's very popular with young people because it was always so expensive to live in New York City. Oh. So a lot of young artists, they musicians, moved they moved to Brooklyn. But now that's getting expensive. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens. All right, we're going to talk about, well, astrology, because that's what you do. I've, I've actually interviewed two other astrologers. So I'm like a pro in this interviewing astrologers. Who, who, besides Adrian? Adrian Duncan and Lillian Jensen, who's a Danish astrologer. Okay. Yeah. And you know, so ever since I, I've spoken with them, I, you know, I've started to think like my life can actually be predicted, but then it makes me a little bit insane because I, because I don't know how to, and I feel, oh, I have to, I actually have to get an education for this, for astrology before I can even like make use of it. No, you know I, mean? I don't think that's true because a lot of human beings have an inner directed intuition. Yeah. And I think that you don't have to know your horoscope to be happy or successful. If you are drawn to the study of astrology and to connect your earthly life with a terrestri with an extraterrestrial or planetary life, well yes by all means. But many people do not feel the need to have a conscious knowledge of astrology to find their path in life. You don't have to have that. No. You happen to have fallen upon astrology and yes. now are fascinated I by am. the connection. <laughs> But it's not all predicted. It's largely set out by the birth you had, the parents you had, the childhood you had. Mm -hmm. And maybe previous love incarnations, who knows? Yeah. But it's set and it's able to be read and interpreted by astrologers. But the right answer always lies within yourself. Yeah. And so. that's my philosophy of working, that I believe that people who come to me are already are already very healthy. Because that they looked you up. I mean, because that they were drawn to astrology. Right. And some people are and some people aren't. That doesn't mean that if you don't know astrology, you can't be fulfilled or happy. Of course, yeah. many people are. Yeah. But there are a growing number of human beings who are recognizing the, the connection between the planetary movement and the human, I won't say effect, But the, the human influence is right. Yeah. And so there a lot many, many more people now are realizing that we are one system of energy. Yeah. What we do affects the stars as much as the stars affect what we do. Oh, it's it. oh sure. It's a two way thing. The energy comes from the planets in the zodiac, but our responses go back out to the universe. And so there's always that. And that's because that's how we change that's right. whatever has been. That's right. Otherwise, it's static. Yeah. Otherwise, nothing yeah, changes. But we feed the zodiac with our responses as much as we are influenced 
by the previous lives of all the people who have ever lived. It's a system that keeps growing and growing and growing and changing. You could predict a future life by the way you see people act today. Yes, and that's why helping human beings raise their consciousness to the stimuli around them helps them move toward a better life. Because if you have a greater awareness and your consciousness is alive today, if there's such a thing as next lives, living consciously today will help you to choose a life next time Mm. and not be just blown to it by the wind of your ignorance. So you are in on the philosophy that you choose your your lives before it happens? It is believed by many people that if you live a very well thought out, high consciousness life, It is believed by many that when you die, you will be able to choose a path or no path. Choose Mm -hmm. that you're not going to incarnate again. Many people believe that. But whether you believe it or not, living more consciously and with full awareness of your surroundings and how you affect other people and they affect you, Living more consciously that way gives you a better life in this life. It never hurts. <laughs> it never and hurts to do that. It never hurts. No. And that's what leads to future karma. Mm. Mm. All right. Otherwise, you are wasting a lot of energy worrying about the future because everybody has death anxiety. Yeah. Everybody has the dread of what lies ahead in an uncertain future. We in America and we all over the planet Earth now are living in a very, very uncertain times. Times are always uncertain, but never in terms of global situations in our lifetime have we met such uncertainty. So many people have tremendous anxiety about what's going to happen financially, business, uh, government. uh, So are you talking both in the big whole picture and also in your personal life? Yes. Fortunately, as much as people worry about the future, people still fall in love. They make fools of themselves. (laughs) They have babies. (laughs) They have fun. They they drink a toast on New Year's. That young people, especially, have a sense of immortality. Yeah that they're not that worried about tomorrow. As people get older, they have more to lose, they have more invested in their lives, they have kids they worry about. But young people have the answer is that they don't even know they're young. And that's the gift. Is that the good good way to live? Yeah. Well, that's the great gift, that young people don't know they're young. Mm. They have an immortality about them. People get older and they have all kinds of anxieties. And what we face in the world today is so much anxiety about what's going to happen to government. Are they going to topple? What's going to be with the global financial situation? What's going to happen with North Korea? What's going to happen with this country? What's going to happen with that country? Young people just fall in love anyway. (laughs) I once met somebody many years ago when I first came to New York. And she was German. She was from Berlin. And she was born in January of 1945 in Berlin, which is the worst time anyone could ever be born in any country. To be born in Germany in 1945, right? Mm. So I was very interested in the karma of this person. Why would a soul choose to be born in such a difficult time? Good question. You know what it was? Just what I thought. Her father was a 19-year-old soldier who was wounded in the hospital. Her mother was a nurse's aide at 18 years old. They fell in love while the bombs were falling, and she was born in a passion of love when they got married. So that's what her soul chose? 
that passion of love? Her? Yes. Yeah. So she was a love child, mm -hmm. proving that love can flourish like a flower mm -hmm. in any environment. Wow. So it's difficult for us <sighs> to make any kind of statement about someone else's karma until you know them and you know their story. And astrology can help you. But it is, it, is astrology directly linked to the idea of karma? Well, yes, in the yeah. sense of what we're talking about. Yeah. Astrology, a lot of astrologers say they can discuss previous and future lives. They can't, right. a lot of them do. Right. I say you don't have to. Mm. Because the horoscope you're born into is the horse you rode into town on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay? And that begins the, the terrain on which all of your flowers will grow is the birth horoscope. Yeah. That represents the situation that your parents had in bringing you here, whether they were other children in the family. All those things are connected and they're visible in the natal chart. It's all there. Yeah. It's all there. Yeah. And that we come, against the, we come upon the question that you asked is, Why? How could that possibly be? Yeah. Is it predicted? Was I destined to be born here? Yeah. yeah. What did I have this family? How did I drop through the chimney? Why And would I choose this why life? Why <laughs> did I choose that family? Yes. What do they have to teach me? Yeah. What do I have to learn from them and what do I have to teach them? Yeah. Because when you're born into a family and your horoscope describes the situation, they are not only your teachers, but your students. Mm. And sometimes children are born into families not only to learn from their parents, but to teach them. Yeah. And that goes back to the same age-old question. Why did I land in that family? Yes. Why are you from Denmark? It's a beautiful place. Yeah. I'm happy why about that. did I why am I in New York City of all places? Yeah. I've lived other places. Yeah. I, I've lived on the beach in California. Mm. I've lived in Paris, France for many years. I've had it. Why? When I first went to Paris, when I was a kid, I went with a schoolmate. We got to Paris, and in those days there was only Orly, there wasn't Charles de Gaulle. And we got to Orly, and then they, you went to Les Invalides, you, they, the bus took you to Les Invalides. And I said to my friend, let's get on this bus number 95. He said, what is it? I said, I, it'll take us somewhere. I think it'll take us over someplace. Yeah. I knew the entire city. I knew the numbers of the bus to take. I knew the street names. How did I do that? How did I do that? I was there before. I once had a past oh, life reading. I really? once had a past life reading by a past life reader because I knew, Par I knew Paris. You're saying you came without having been there? I was you, never there. And then you had I knew that you anyway. take the bus over you here and I bet there. we'll have a restaurant over here. I knew the city. So I did, later on, years later, I had a past life reading by someone. You know, I'm not sure of these things, but I did. But you wondered already then, right? You must have wondered, how do I know this? My friend said, how do you know? I said, I don't know. I think we could go over here. I bet there'll be something. <laughs> I knew how to walk around that city. I knew everything about it. And I knew I couldn't leave. I knew I had to move there right away. And I did. And then you have this reading. I had this reading, and she said that I lived there in the 14th century, I think she said, 1300s, 1200s, 1300s, and I was an orphan, I was an orphan, and I lived with monks in the country, and she said that I would always run away from the monks and go to Paris. I was seven years old. I didn't know that someone could tell you about your past life. Don't you have to like go into a trance and then s figure it out yourself? This, this is what she said. She, she just, was good. She was good. But how, how could you see that? She just had the ability to see? I have met psychics and mediums in my life that are absolutely real. Wow. I have met them. Yeah. She was one of them. Because 
it was such a true story yeah, yeah. that I kept leaving the church, I kept leaving the monks and running back to Paris by myself. And the monks would come back to Paris and take me back to the to the to the, the monastery all the time. And it it sort of made sense to you with the issues that you have in your present life. Yes, it com it completely did. I couldn't find it in the astrology of it, but I could certainly l relate to what she said. Right. But the astrology has a mystical and magical connection with the evolution of an individual's path that I have never been able to escape. I've always tried to escape astrology. Yeah, you know, I noticed that um, from your text on your website that you said you've resisted astrology for a long time. I did. I, I, I found that very interesting because... I did. I said, this can't be. This, this, can't, this can't be. Somebody must have figured out how to make this seem like it's true. Yeah. And then I remember looking at when I was doing, um, I was beginning to set up charts all, there was no computer, I had to do it all by hand. And I came upon some aspects in it, my own horoscope. And they struck me so profoundly that it became part of my life's work to understand that. I'll give you the book I wrote about that, mm -hmm. about the nodes of the moon. I'll give you that book. It's called it. Sunshines, The Astrology of Being Happy. Oh, it's about what makes people steal happiness and what makes people earn happiness. The stolen kind you can never keep. No. The earned kind you can never lose. Right. That's the nodes of the moon. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that struck me because there were things in there that no one knew. Thus my inner self, my inner life. So I've never been able to escape the power of astrology. And I have been trained, as you probably read on my site, in communicative psychoanalytic psychotherapy. So I can combine psychotherapy with the horoscope reading and understand the, that I got into it through Eastern philosophy. That was yeah. the first thing I was doing, yeah. was reading about Eastern philosophy and, and karma and life and past and future lives. And then came astrology, and then came psychotherapy. So, so is that karma philosophy? That's not a part of the astrology study. For some, it is. Only for yes, some. there's a whole uh, realm of uh, individual Stephen Forrest, who's an evolutionary astrologer. Uh, there's a guy in South America. He's good too. Many, many people who believe that the soul is passing through phase after phase. And I have my own interpretation of what I believe that's true. Because I believe that this life that we're living, that sometimes seems so long, yeah. goes in an instant. Mm. It's a flicker. Mm. And I always think, if you breathe in, That's the first breath you came in on when you were born. When you breathe out, it symbolizes the last breath you will take on earth. And in between the inspiration and the expiration, that's the flicker of a candle that's your whole life. And what you do in that life raises the level of consciousness of all beings everywhere. Everything you do affects all beings everywhere. No pressure, <laughs> but <laughs> it isn't really pressure because if you, it, well, I understand what you're saying. It is pressure. It's pressure to be conscious and not to act like a lower animal that op operates on instinct. Mm -hmm. Astrology helps you, and it's one of many modes that can. But astrology helps you sort out the difficult conflicts that you have because they don't seem to go together. You want to have a family and get married and have kids. You don't want to get married and have a family and have kids. You want to have one partner. You don't want to have one partner. 
You want to run a business because you don't want to have a boss? You need to have a boss to have discipline. <laughs> many, many sides of people conflict. Yeah. Astrology helps you to integrate those conflicts and not necessarily erase them, but to embrace the fact that we're a mass of complications sometimes. Mm -hmm. If I can help people embrace that and enjoy the fact that it's not a neat little package. Some charts I read, when I get them, I think, wow. I scratch <laughs> my head, I say, wait a minute. What the hell does this mean? Yeah. And then I think, well, if I can't figure it out, neither can the person. So uh, let's work together. True. Yeah. yeah. Some charts are neater, simpler. Their path is clearer. What, what does that mean that you get charts that you can't figure out that you think, oh, no, what am I going Well, to because with? let's say you have planets all over the place. Yeah. And the person has many interests in many different areas. Yeah. But they have a problem focusing. Those charts to me seem like abstract expressionist paintings. They're not figurative. Some, some charts are like figurative paintings. This is a farm, and this is a farmer, and this is the wheat that grows up on the farm, and here are the little children. And then you get a chart that looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. And you have to accept And not say, what's that supposed to be? No. If a person has a complicated chart, they have to fulfill that complication and live that abstract expressionist painting to the fullest, but not necessarily turn themselves into a farmer. But what do you do then? So, so, so you, you speak with that client, and then does the horoscope change? Do you see that? That the chart changes? The horoscope doesn't, well, the horoscope evolves as you you, know, you have a, a progressed chart, a transiting chart. You have, yes, your chart progresses, but the core is still there. And is it still abstract then? It's still abstract. Oh, okay. Abstract. When you see an abstract painter, an abstract painting, you don't say, what is this supposed to be? The people are saying, what am I supposed to be? You're supposed to embrace many sides of yourself and not look for a simpler answer. It's an, it's easy for us to say that. It's hard if you have that kind of a chart. Mm. It's hard to sometimes live it. But those people are great in crisis. Mm, to navigate. In other words, if they're into everything, yeah. if there's a <laughs> you know nuclear a bomb, those are the people who are going to say, here, you go yeah. here, you go here. Yeah. I'll take this. Here's the food. Here's the water. Yeah. Bury the dead. Yeah. Yeah. But if nothing's happening, they go nuts. Because yeah. they can't stand calmness. And being still. And, and that's not their path? Is that what you're saying? No. If you take those people out to a ride out into the country, to the lake, yeah. and the moonlight, and the quiet, and just hear, ooh, ooh, yeah. Yeah. after about a minute, they'll say, well, this was nice. Yeah. Let's get back to the city. <laughs> Is that a particular star sign you're talking about then? No, it's the oh. planetary spread. Because I'm, I've already started to think about, like, oh, which star sign would have that those traits? And that leads up to my next question, what is... Which is, what, what do you do when you are a normal person who haven't studied that much astrology? I'm even struggling to, fi to remember all of the names. <laughs> in the, in the so what, if you, what do you do when? So, so when, when you want to know, so someone tells you. I'm a Leo or I'm an Aries. Yes. There are generalizations you can make. Yeah. Someone's a Leo. But not all Leos want to have the center stage of the movie. Some of them are shy. Yeah. Aries, supposed to be aggressive. Some people are not. But so if I'm I'm not an astrologer, but I sometimes I pretend to be because I'm so excited right. about this. Right. And then people will tell me their star sign and they'll tell me their issues. And I don't know what to do because it doesn't always match. It's and I'm like, oh, but you need to see like a real astrologer. But what can what can I do from my level of understanding Learn more. with astrology? Learn okay. more. Okay. Because you realize there are different kinds of Aries people. Yeah. Because Mars rules the sign of Aries. 
That's yeah. it, every sign has a ruler. Yeah. Okay. Every sign if has their a ruler. Mars is in Aries, also, then they may be a very what you think about Aries. But if their Mars is in Pisces, yeah, they're going to be shyer. Oh, okay. So that's what it is. You're going to have a Libra that's supposed to be nice. Yeah. You have a, sometimes Libras are the angriest sign in the zodiac. Because they have suppressed mass. rage. Yeah. yeah. So you have to know not just the general, because Libras want to be thought of as balanced, but they're not all balanced. So you have, and many Tauruses, you think, oh, Tauruses are into money. They're not necessarily no. into money. They're into the pleasure that money can ah, buy. Ah, yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. I'm thinking of one. They're, yeah, the Taurus people are not like Capricorn. Capricorn is into the saving of the money. Oh, okay. Capricorn people have a terrible time in high school. Because they're 40 years old already in high school. <laughs> Capricorn people begin to flourish after they're 30. They begin to grow. When they're 50, they're beginning to come into their real self. Wow. So you have to know all the nuances. Yeah, yeah. So so does which part of this matters the most? Because there's something called uh, your rising. Is that the mass when you say rising? No. I have Leo rising in my chair. You have Leo rising. Yes. Okay. Is that the most significant part of it? No. The Leo rising is the way you present yourself. Oh. When I look at you, I think of you as a 1960s hippie. Oh, <laughs> it's because of the headband. It's the today. band. <laughs> it's the headband. I'm experimental, okay? <laughs> right. So I saw that, I thought, oh yeah. So there's a certain glamour aspect to Leo rising. People who are their rising sign is Leo, they definitely have a glamorous presentation. All right, good. But they might not be. Maybe they could be simple Virgo people who are not that. But your rising sign is your public presentation. Okay, okay. that's how you present yourself. Yes. To other people. Okay, so so what what would you say is the most significant thing to know other than your star sign? I've been yeah. asked that many times. I have a different point of view the, from a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that the planet that rules you is not always the ruling planet of your sun sign, of your rising sign. They always say, whatever it rules your ascendant is your ruler, like you would be the sun ruled. I think you have to look at the chart because you have other factors that I watch for that become the real planetary directors of life. For example, suppose you have Venus yes. in Pisces and it's overhead. What, what does overhead mean? It's, 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 uh, up, it's high up in the sky when you were born. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's a kind of Elizabeth Taylor kind of aspect where beauty is going to be with your guide all your life. Ah. Glamorous beauty. Okay. She didn't have that, but it's something like that. Yeah. Even though you might be Sagittarius rising with Jupiter and Capricorn, and you're all into like the financial world, but it'll all have to do with that because it'll all have to do with Venus because Venus overhead is very powerful. So you have to look at not only what rules that planet, what's rising in the east before the sun in the morning. I always look at that too. I put the sun on the eastern horizon. What planet was rising in the morning? In the east. In say. the east. Like right now. Right now. This is December. Yeah. If you get up early in the morning now, you can see Venus rising just before the sun. And so what I put on my website was, because Venus is in Sagittarius... I put on my website, if you get up early in the morning, you can almost see Bette Midler. Ah. Oh. Because she's Sagittarius. Okay, yeah. So. I don't the, fully get all of this. You realize that, right? You don't get it. <laughs> I don't get all of this. Right, well, you're asking. <laughs> I am asking. No, but it's, it, if it, it, you have dawn, 
And then you have planets that well could 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 be rising before dawn. Yeah. Because the planets are all over the sky. How often do, does the planets? Oh, they change, change all the time. All the weeks, time. days, months. Some don't. Some take years to change. Some take years to change. We've had Pluto and Capricorn since 2007 and eight, and it'll be here until the 2020s. The further out a planet is from the sun, the slower it moves. The slower it moves, the longer it takes to go into the consciousness. Oh no. The moon goes every couple days. I can't give you a lifetime of astrology in two minutes. I know, I know. But I see you're very, very excited. You're so enthusiastic about it. But you just have to go and uh, learn. Take classes. Yeah. They have classes in Denmark. Take classes. And I know you're so enthusiastic. But try to stick to a teacher mm. who you trust, whom you trust. And learn, you know, and then read as much as you can in terms of books and articles. And the web has so much astrology on it. It is so intriguing because sometimes it is just spot on. And I, but but then I I just don't know. I don't know how to get to the point where I can actually follow it. So before leaving, it'll happen automatically. But but before leaving Denmark, I I asked an astrologer. Where, uh, you know, is is this date okay? Is it what? <laughs> is it this an okay date to uh, to leave Denmark? You know, you know, it's just. Oh, you, you mean know. to predict whether you should leave? Yeah, which date should I fly? And you then he told what? me a specific time. Fly and when then... you get a cheap ticket. <laughs> People ask me all the time if I live my life by astrology. Yeah. And I say yes, of course I do. Until there's something I really want to do. That doesn't matter because I always go back to what I have to do. Sometimes you have to. You came here on a retrograde Mercury. And what If they don't mean? go to America on a retrograde Mercury, the tapes won't work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it didn't. <laughs> no, I think it was because it was the 13th. So he said, "Please choose another date." But that, but I had already bought the ticket. So he just gave me a specific time to leave the house. But you know, the the journey was awful anyway. So I had a fly across the Pacific Ocean two years ago. I had a fly <laughs> during a retrograde Mercury with the Moon and the South Node in Pisces, which is the ocean, in a retrograde Mercury across the ocean, eleven hours during a storm at night. Yeah, I did it, and I got on the plane, and I said, "Well." I'm going to sleep. But how do how do you handle it inside your head? Because something because you have to have faith in your life, uh, and you cannot be afraid of the stars being bad. Certain things I follow, certain things I don't. You'll say that's be true for every astrologer. Some people wouldn't leave the house on that day. Some people would. You're going to have a lot of different opinions when you're in your work with astrology. But always, you can follow astrology to a certain point, as I do. But the human instinct—you always know what's best for yourself. Nobody else does. But if it's if we take that seriously, I know what's best. Then I don't need an astrologer. Not true, because sometimes you have so many different factors operating. That a good astrologer can help you come to the proper conclusion by eliminating all of the other extraneous elements. But it is a real problem, a dilemma, a challenge that that astrologers they have so many that they're so different opinions that they have their own filter. Of course, Couldn't they do. Couldn't you go crazy? Yeah. <laughs> How many should I ask before? <laughs> before well, you, I think that you're in a state now of really exploring. Yeah. You're in you're in a state of exploring different points of view, which is wonderful. Yes. There are different kinds of astrology. There's electional astrology, where you pick a date to do things. There is a there uh, there is a financial astrology. There is medical astrology. You're in a place where you're exposing yourself to all the different things. You're not ready to settle down into one mode yet. Probably not. Not at all. <laughs> Because everybody's going to have a different point of view. Eventually you will find teachers 
whose philosophies make more sense to you uh, than others. Uh, it's that feeling inside when you know what this guy is saying, it's the truth. That's right. Know it. And that's the person you will study with. Uh, but so which type of astrology do you do? If there are so many different types. I do Western astrology. I don't do like Jodish uh, Indian astrology. I use a Western zodiac. Yeah. Western? Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a mixture. I consider myself a mixture of Eastern philosophy and uh, psychoanalytic psychotherapy and tr- and uh, and modern Western astrology. But you don't do with, with time, you don't predict a certain time, this is the right time to go out. I try not to. Yeah, you don't deal with that. I try not to do that. Because it, it makes you I have insane. clients of many years who will ask me, Yeah. is this a good day to get married? And yeah, I say, it's too late that. now. <laughs> Because You should have thought of that on the first date. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said to my, uh, my a client of mine. She says, she says, I'm going to pick this date to get married. I said, okay, but the first it's date too already. late. You should, the first date was what? <laughs> 19 years ago, that's when you should have asked. Not now. Mm. By the time you're getting married, it's too late to see whether it's a good day. And and that's the, the issue with how much you can say, like, in the in the past, you know, looking back, and how much you can it's say very, looking yeah. forward. And that's what you, as a, as a practitioner, it depends a lot on the interaction between you and the client, because some people are interested. I'm I'm a person who's very interested in Uh, early events okay and how they affect you now yeah I won't give you the philosophy of it it'll confuse you to death but it's <laughs> it's about how planets that happened in a certain place carve memories in the unconscious mind when those planets go over the same point again years later you get a triggered memory of That what makes happened makes sense Yeah. And that's how I connect it with psychology. Mm, that is really good that you do that. I love really it. And I, yeah. And people say, how did you do that? It's simple. That happened in 1984 when you were six. And it's happening now. You're having a memory of what happened to you When you went to school at six. Yeah. Yeah. Unconsciously. Yeah. And the trick is when you bring it to the conscious, their actions are more fully aware now than they were at six. Yeah. yeah. At six years old, my parents got divorced and blah, 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 blah. What's going on in your relationship now? I'm fighting with my boyfriend. <laughs> Same as you. Oh, man. Okay, but I, I do need to ask this. It's a bit provoking, maybe, but but it's just if if you're not planning on studying astrology and and you know, so you you've studied for many for many years, right? To know all of what you know now. Yeah, yeah. So can this is there no way that we can pass forward? Like, uh, just say how right now, as someone who didn't study, how can I use and apply astrology? Just okay. because. Do you know what I mean? Just because sure. when so we can study all of lives and then we become 60 and then we know a lot. But okay. but then right. What about you're our 30s? You're a person and 40s and 50s and we didn't you're, know. You're a person who has been looking for a restaurant all over the city. You didn't know the name of the restaurant, but you knew it was supposed to be wonderful. You got to the place and you found the restaurant. And then you took a look at the menu. And you said, well, what should I order first? I don't know. I, I don't know what to order here. You have to take, you're very enthusiastic. It's great to see you doing this. You're very enthusiastic. So it's stupid for me to say you need patience. <laughs> you don't want a patience. You want to gobble up the entire pie, the entire I'm menu. I'm just saying I don't want to turn 60 until I know stuff. Can, why can't I know it now? You already do know it now. You do know it now. Your intuition knows it now. Yeah. You've just fallen upon a matrix that you that you know. It's like 
It's like you've come upon an old friend that you haven't seen in many years and you're so excited to see the friend because astrology means something to you that it doesn't mean other people. You've stumbled upon a gold mine, a treasure. Yeah. yeah. And you want to gobble that treasure up. I understand that. I felt the same thing when I got into astrology. I still love it. But you're so enthusiastic that it's hard to say to you, have patience. It will come to you and you'll find your way. Just keep looking at it and each day more awareness will un be unveiled to you as you and you don't have to wait till you're 60 but you do have to wait a couple of weeks <laughs> a couple of weeks before you get that whole thing but obviously it's wonderful to see this enthusiasm in you it's but, great but you know what i mean right that wise people they you know, it's like you have to be so old before you get all of the wisdom And then you can't go back. That's because young <laughs> and do people, things right. young people never know they're young. And there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. No. No, there are no mistakes. There are only choices. But there are a wiser person waiting for me when I'm 60 saying, you should have done. <laughs> you know, well, a lot of different. people, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people live with regret like that. But people who live with regret will always find a reason to think they should have done something else. I and that's okay. You know, it's, an you know, it's a life attitude. Right. It's a life attitude. Yeah. Because everything is a choice. It's a direction. Everything is a path you're taking. Mm -hmm. Astrology is great. I love it. But it was a choice that I made mm -hmm. that took me away from other things I could have done, which yeah. was mostly entertainment business. Yeah. Okay. What, what is it in astrology that you are most occupied with at the moment? What do you care most about at this very day? This I'm very interested in, in the current transformation of civilization that is necessary for everyone in the world to be involved in this crisis. But something amazing could happen to human beings if we don't destroy the planet. And that works on a global level, on a personal level as well. And I'm interested in the intersection of planets. I'm inter interested in the intersection of planetary uh, orbits and what it does to the individual. And I'm always also interested in now in relationships and gender. The fact that gender is changing so much. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it has nothing to do with sexual orientation and has nothing really to do with whether you stand up or sit down to pee in, in the bathroom. It's, it's, it's all about the mixture of male and female that is in everybody. That there are masculine signs and there are feminine signs. So what does and that a, do with our, our energy? Is it's well, been, it's been mixed it up. colors how you project yourself. Yeah. A person with all masculine signs could be a heterosexual woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she's not a girly, 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 girly. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. she's a skier. She's a Climbing mountains. They're so cool. I admire them. They're so cool. It's a different what yeah. kind. Then you have a man who's all all earth and water, which would be feminine signs and strictly heterosexual also. Yeah. But he'd be happy to take care of the baby. Yeah. So what's being redefined now, as planets are being discovered beyond Pluto, what's being redefined is the human gender dilemma as people search for a solution to it. I'm interested in that too now because you're always going to be faithfully drawn to certain kinds of people. Yeah. Partly because of your parents' marriage and partly because of your 
inter, your, your interior sexual drive and emotional drive is fulfilled by certain kinds of people. When you're young, your sexual attitudes can be very wide. As you get older, you have definite needs that you must fulfill. And when you meet someone who fulfills those needs, who can fulfill needs on other levels, it's a deep relationship. That's what I'm interested in now. I, I, and, and that makes me think of a question that I really want to ask you. Um, about... Oh, the others were not really wanting to. No, no, no. This is the real stuff. <laughs> no, no, it's just about the law of attraction. Right. You know, it's been very popularized. Right. So, if if so, that's a lot of theories on how to do this, and of course they have some common traits on how to attract what you want in your life. But would you say that it depends when I'm Pisces with Leo rising and whatever else I have, the way that I can attract things and the way that Jim Carrey can attract things. Are if you're a so Paris, if you're a Pisces, mm -hmm. you don't have to try. Because if you allow the universe to come to you, it will. It's effort that's not needed for Pisces. It's openness to the universe. And if you are, and that that's, provokes me, huh? <laughs> that provokes me. <laughs> well, that's the truth for Pisces. That as you get older, you will realize that Pisces has tides, times when you're very enthusiastic about life, times when you're very pessimistic about life. Sure. Moments when you feel complete love for all beings, and moments when you think, "Don't bother me." Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> And once you accept that, yeah. and you accept that ride, and you realize that your answer is always going to be about love, that's always going to be, even though you're going to be made a fool of by people sometimes, and you're going to be drawn into things you shouldn't, uh -huh. because you are, uh, you are a person who loves to tempt the fates, and sometimes get into dangerous situations just to prove you can get out of them. And that part of you has to realize that you survive. Pisces people often think they're not going to live that long, and they end up going to everybody else's funeral. <laughs> I did take that trip because I thought, I want to go to the States before I die, and I might die soon. Right, yeah, yeah. you might die soon. Yeah. And also, I recognize what you say about um, testing the fate because sometimes I, but that's because sometimes I get so desperate because I feel there's no guidance anywhere for me and I just do something. The universe is want, always want, guiding want, you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what Pisces eventually comes to accept. When I'm that, more mature, maybe. Not, no, not when you're more mature. You are, you're a very mature person. But right now you're 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 going through, I believe, a certain uh, wound that you're trying to heal. Uh, that there's a deep wound that you are working on, and that's the thing that requires the most patience of forgiveness. And it, it that's what I see now, and it requires that you uh, allow time to pass to heal a wound that went very deep. Yeah. And you have to allow the time to heal it. In its, in, and it is slowly healing, but it's slower than you need. Yeah, <laughs> you can say that it's slower than I need. Yeah, so you have to, you have to, you have to let this, this is, uh, this is, a, this is a compassion thing and a forgiveness thing that has to happen, and it will. But uh, it's taking longer, and the hurt is still there. I see it. Okay, so that is, the, now we are particularly talking about me, which I enjoy, but <laughs> I'm thinking about all of the other star signs. Will it, well, so it will have a different, we, we will all have a different way of attracting what we want. Is, is that... Yeah, because that yeah, the say. sun sign is still your strongest path. The star sign, you call it. Yeah. That's the path you're on. Yeah. 
and you are a person who loves to experience the mystery of interaction. I'm going to give you this book. Yes. Because I think it'll make things a lot clearer. Not much clearer. <laughs> <laughs> Sunshines. Wow. The astrology of being happy. Wow, that's great. So you have all the star signs here. What? You have all the star, star signs. It's everything's in here. Everything is in here. <laughs> Let's start with the opening chapter for the yes. signs. Yes. The power From of the, the sun. From the beginning, right? Yeah, the power of the sun. That, that, the that's, sun. A, that's going to talk about all the star signs. Then it goes into the deeper thing. Amazing. Okay, so so when you have Tim Carey say, just just really visualize what you want and then it will happen. This doesn't go for everyone. No, it doesn't. You have to visualize what's good for you, not what you want. It's a difference. Yeah, what you need and not what you want. There's yeah. a difference between I want it yeah. and I'd like this. So you have to be more clear. You have to be more clear yeah. from the heart. Yeah. If you ask from the heart, it comes. And do you have a sound of a better life? That was it. Silence. <laughs> Tranquility and silence. So you're not one of the restless people who don't like silence. Everybody likes inner silence at some point. Mm. Calmness is available to everybody, I think. In general, calmness. All right. Thank you so much. Here we go. Into it with me. Let's see how much is. <laughs> Let's see how much it got. If, if it got nothing, I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> Will you? <laughs> And thank you for listening throughout this conversation. I hope that you got something out of it, even though I was quite ambitious and wanted to know like everything there is to know. I just sometimes feel it is it is silly to sit back and wait until I'm 60 and then I understand everything. How about just just let, let us just have it now, right? Well, let me know what you think about that. Go to facebook.com slash the sound of better life and leave me a comment because it is much more fun when I know that you are around. All right, I'm back with yet another English episode next Sunday. It's going to be about energy work, especially for actors. Yeah, you don't want to miss this one. Until next time, rethink everything.